Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. The Christmas hymn that we sang as we processed in, Go Tell It on the Mountain, saved a university. The Fisk Jubilee Singers were a 10-member touring ensemble raising funds for the debt-ridden Fisk, a historically black university. Taking the complete amount of what was left in the treasury, the ensemble left home in Nashville on October 6, 1871, and they went on an 18-month tour. Now, Go Tell It on the Mountain was not originally in the repertoire because the group didn't particularly like singing the old hymns as a choir. They wanted to sing them by themselves and in church, you see. But the conductor convinced them, please, sing this song. It's such a great song. And by the time they reached New York, it was part of their program. African-American scholars Eric Lincoln and Lawrence Mamaya refer to these songs as anthemized spirituals. Because <laughs> we don't sing them like they used to sing them, right? Go Tell It on the Mountain, being one, became a most popular Christmas hymn. A song that proclaimed Jesus was coming to enslave people became a song that saved a university and paid all of their debt. It's still around today. And it calls us to the work, the proclamation of Christ's birth. The song proclaims that Christ was born, Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, God of very God. Go tell it on the mountain because God is bringing liberty and freedom and release from the shackles that bind and whatever keeps humans down. This is a song of hope. Christmas, of course, is a sweet, sweet celebration about a child. But in this song, it is a child who will bring the valleys low and straighten the crooked paths and heal the sick, cure the lame, and free the captives. Make no mistake. I believe there are people out there today who feel bound and depressed and depressed and burdened, shackled and anxious, and I believe they are in need of a bit of hope. For that is the meaning of the song, and that is the meaning of Christmas in one very important way, hope. Go tell the people burdened about hope. Go tell them if they're suffering and fearful about COVID that that God is not going to leave them alone, that God will deliver us out of this. And even in the darkest part of it, God will be present with us. God will not abandon us. This is the go tell it on the mountain kind of hope. Go tell the people who are so burdened by political division that they themselves have become just images of hate because they can't see a way out. And they've lost their joy and they've lost their belief. They can't imagine a peace beyond all understanding where we might live in community. They need to hear a go tell it on the mountain kind of hope. Tell them that God has hope for us. God shows us how to live together and desires us to be in community. Now, you know, on this Christmas Eve, there are families in pain and suffering. There are some not looking forward to tomorrow and the Christmas table. They need to hear that God loves them. They need to hear it. And that love is available for them and that they are worthy of belonging without shame or guilt. And this is their table too. They need to hear some go tell it on the mountain kind of hope. And you know that when we're done tonight, we will all go and tuck ourselves in 
And there will be people who sit with the dying, as that great Compline prayer says, who watch and weep, who wait for the light in the darkness. There are people who will be patrolling our streets, working at gas stations, late at night at stores and fire stations all around us and literally all around this church. They need to know a little hope and a little love while they carry out their night duties. Just like the shepherds keeping their flocks, go tell it on the mountain, hope is here, peace is here, love is here because I'm here and you're here. It's not just because Jesus came so long ago, but Jesus has given us the spirit to share that hope, love, and peace now. Don't you think as I do that there are people who might want a little go tell on the mountain, spiritual anthematizing, if you will? I think they do. We're to be like angels and shepherds, a holy family making room for this God in our lives and in so doing to make room in the world for the kingdom. We have to be like the first actors, like the shepherds, like the crowd around our manger scene. Now, I know some of us, now we all have different manger scenes, but I was reflecting on my manger scene here. Some of us are a little skittish like the chickens in the manger scene. We're not sure about this message and whether I can do it. Some of us are a little sleepy like the sheep. We're just going to go home after this. Thank you very much. And maybe I'll, I'll forget this down the road. Some of us are stubborn like the cow and we're cantankerous like the donkey. And that's me being polite. But that is no excuse. The presence of the baby Jesus on Christmas night invites us to take up the gospel task, to go tell it in our lives, beginning right now, all day tomorrow, and I'd love it if we could make it to the third day. Because then you might do four, five, maybe six. Like the manger, the baby is laid within our hearts, and there's no time like the present to begin. So the next week as you undertake visiting friends or passing through the gas station or upon a homeless person come or see a police officer, for goodness sake, give them a little hope. Tell them thank you. Tell them they're loved. What could happen? Only good. Only good. And for goodness sake, look across that Christmas table. Look at the family members who've hurt you and offer a little love and forgiveness, mercy. It won't hurt at all, <laughs> but I guarantee it'll be a different Christmas gathering. Offer a little hope, a little love. It's Christmas after all. We're to love one another, holding people close, right? Caring and giving a little bit of this hope to the ones we bump into. So go tell it on the mountain. And as the song says, everywhere. Go tell it everywhere. After all, if you're like me, if you're like me, we all need it. <laughs> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.